We all good on this? Everybody see? So this is 11.5. I'm, I'm getting this ready for 11.6 here. But this is what we did in 11.5. So again, in 11.5, last night's homework, you look right here and you go opposite, same. When there's per and what was 11.5? Parentheses squared. That's not going to be in today's section. So, so on the exam, we take in two weeks, both those will be there. They'll be the kind with the parentheses squared. You just go opposite, same. So that would be plus 3, plus 5. There's the center. And then the slope in the front, which is actually positive. Up 2 over 1. Connect the dots. There's the U shape. You got it. Now, today, in 11.6, oops, where is it? Let me bring it in here. Today, in 11.6, we're going to have things like this. So let me just bring it over. So in 11.6, question number 1 f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. Plus 8x plus 7, yeah. And so they want us to graph that. Notice, no parentheses squared. No parentheses squared in 11.6. So I can't just do the opposite same thing. That only works when you've got parentheses squared. Everybody tracking with me? So I can't do that. I, I got to find the center of the U shape, the vertex. How do you find it? To find the vertex, the center of the parabola. I'm going to give you a special, this special formula. X is negative B over 2A. That's how you have to do it when there's no parentheses squared. You can't do opposite same. X is negative B over 2A. What does that look like, negative B over 2A? That's like the beginning of the quadratic formula, huh? Remember the quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus the square root of blah, 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 all over 2A? It's like, it's like the part without the plus or minus root. It's the quadratic formula without the plus or minus root. Anyway, just trying to help you remember it. You can put it on your 3 by 5 card, of course. But just another way to help you remember it. So that's what you do. What, what do I mean, negative B over 2A? Well, come over here. Let's do it. So now, what do you think B and A are? But they always are when you do the quad. What, what's A? What's the number in the front here? One. One. And what's B? Eight. Huh? Just like they always are. You know, same thing as always. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the formula. Now, remember, it's got a negative in it, doesn't it? Just like the quadratic formula, same thing, negative B. So negative B, negative 8, right, negative 8 over 2A, 2 times 1. So what is that then? That's X is negative 4, isn't it? Negative 8 over 2, half of, half of 8, negative 4. So I've got the X coordinate, you with me? That's only half the story though. So I know X is negative 4, but what's the Y? I need the Y value for the center also. Plug it in, exactly. Now that you've got the X, just plug in step two. Plug in your X. So this is how you find the center. Instead of opposite same, it's a little more work when there's not parentheses squared. So now plug it in. Plug it in where? Back in the beginning. Remember, bless you, F of X is Y. We've seen that before, huh? Function letters are Y, really? F of X, G of X, H of X? Those are just Y. So this is really saying Y equals X squared plus 8X plus 7. So Y equals, and plug in the X, negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 7. Y equals 16 minus 32 plus 7. Y is, is that minus 9? Minus 9. So there's the center. That's the center of the U shape. So I'm, at this point, you're going to do the same thing you always do. Let's go find that center. So I'll go to a fresh screen here. I'll just do a big graph. So what's the center? Minus 4 minus 9. That's X, Y. So that means go back four, one, two, three, four, down nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, right there. Back four, down nine. And um, where does the graph go from here? What do you think we do? Because so we got our first dot right. There's the center. Once you've got the center of the U shape, 
You need one other dot, right? Now, how did we do it in the last section? Let's go back here real quick. How did we do it in 11.5? Where Once we had our first dot right here, you know, like our center dot, which was much easier, huh? It was just opposite same. Once we had our center dot, how did we get the second dot? Where? Yeah, right here. Looked where? Right in the front. And that was slope, rise over run, huh? Same thing here. Where, where's my slope, do you think? Right there, yeah, right in the front. It's the same thing. It's what's right in the front. So the, so the ending part is exactly the same. Just go rise over run, go up one over one. So from here, go up one over one. There's the dot, connect the dots. We've got the U-shape. Does that make sense what I did? I went up one over one. Connect the dots. We've got the U-shape. Sense? So it's so it's a different way to get the center. You've got to use that x is negative b over two a formula, and then plug that in again. Why? Once you get the center, though, you just do the same thing. Rise over run. There's the u shape. Is that good? And um, now they they're going to ask another question here. They're going to say, okay, so so what's the vertex? What do we say? Minus four, minus nine. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So there's the vertex. Does the problem open upward or downward? It's upward. You know that because the number in the front is positive 1. There's a positive 1 there, invisible positive 1 in the front of x squared, right? So positive is up, negative is down. If the number in the very front of the x squared is positive, it's going up because that's rise, isn't it? If it's negative, it's going down. Next question, find x-intercept. That's new. Find x-intercepts. How do we find x-intercepts? What is an x-intercept? Here's the graph. Do you see? Do you see them on the graph? Do you see? Do you see? I mean, with, without getting the exact number, but do you, do you do you know what they're talking about? If I, if you were to go up there and I was to say point to the x-intercepts, would you know what I'm talking about? So we're talking about. Let's so make sure we're all on the same page. We're talking about this point here and this point here, huh? The places where the graph hits the x-axis, right? Remember the sideways one is the x-axis, the vertical one's the y. So we're saying, where does our graph hit the x-axis? Those are the x-intercept points. Now, we can't rely on my crazy graphing. I just shot those arrows up. I have no idea where it really hits, right? We're going to need to do something to figure those out. What could we do to find x-intercept? What do you know about those dots, those two little green dots? Do I know how far over that is? No, I can't really tell. But do I know how far up they are? Well, yeah, they're up zero. They're on the line. That's what it means to be an x-intercept. You're on the x-axis. Your height is zero, right? So their height is zero, isn't it? Their height is zero, meaning this is over something up zero, and this one's over back something up zero. They both have a second coordinate, a y coordinate, of zero, don't they? So what could I do then? I could plug in y is zero to the equation. You see, because they have a y value zero. So if I take the equation, which I've already forgotten, there it is, f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. So I'll write it right here. f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. And I make y zero. So to find, to find an x-intercept or intercepts, step one, plug in y zero. I don't know if you remember, but that's how we always find intercepts on any graph is we make the opposite letter zero. So if you want to find x-intercepts, you make y zero. Because that's what it means, huh? Those dots are at a height of zero, aren't they? So, okay, so what? So I'm going to take this little green equation, and I'm going to make y zero. First off, I don't even see y. Where's y in this green equation? Where's y? 
It's the f of x, remember? The function letter is your y. So that means put 0 right here. So this is 0, because that's really y. So, okay, so how do I solve that little equation for x there? What am I going to do? Yeah, do the diamond thing. Yeah, do the diamond. Yeah, what are, what are two numbers that multiply to be 7, add to be 8? Multiply to be 7, yeah, add to be 8. What times what? Multiply 7, 1 times 7, huh? What signs do they need? Both positive, because that way they'll add to be 8, and they'll multiply to be 7, plus 1 plus 7. So we get 0 equals x plus 1, x plus 7. They multiply to be 7, add to be 8. And remember how to solve those kind of things? Remember, it's just, it's going to be the first one equals 0, or the second one equals 0, right? Because the two things times to equal 0, either one could be 0 to make that happen. And then it's just going to be opposite sign, opposite sign, isn't it? So now, now you just subtract 1 from both sides, so it's negative 1, subtract 7 from both sides, so it's negative 7. I'll just put comma. So that means those two x values are at negative 1 and negative 7, which means my drawing is not correct. <laughs> it means that it should be more like this, right through there, at negative 1, and the other one's back here at negative 7. So this one's negative 1, 0, and that one's negative 7, 0. Those are the two x-intercepts. How are we doing? Is that making sense? So what did I do there? To find an x intercept, no, get, get this, to find an x intercept, you make y 0. You always make the opposite letter 0. Why? Because that's what it means to be an x intercept. You're at a height of 0. Your y is 0. Right? So I did that. I got them. So I'll come back over here. What did I do? Something crazy. There we go. So uh, the x-intercepts are, type an ordered pair. Yeah, so they want you to type in here, what was it? Minus 7, 0, comma, minus 1, 0. And they want commas between them, like that. That makes sense. So you can't just say negative 7, negative 1. You've got to say negative 7, 0, comma, negative 1, 0. How do I know that? They're saying ordered pair. Finally, sorry, there's one more but it'll be quick part. Find any y-intercepts. Can you see it down there at the bottom? There's a little more. Hello. Find the y. So those were x-intercepts. Now let's find y-intercepts, which means where's the graph? Hit the y-axis. Let's go back and look. Where does it hit the y-axis? Well, here's the y-axis. It's the y. doesn't look like it does. Well, it... it it's just because my drawing is not the best. It does. It will. Those, those branches, those U-shaped, let me draw them a little more accurately. They keep going up and slowly right. So something way above my view, it will hit the y-axis. It will. That right branch, keeps, it doesn't go straight up. You know, it's going up and right. So it will eventually hit the y-axis somewhere up, way above. How do we find out where? Okay, let's get this game plan. To find x-intercepts, you make y zero. So to find y-intercepts, you make x zero. Get the idea? It's always the opposite letter is zero. That'd be for sure something you want to put on your 3 by 5 card. So let me write that down. To find a y-intercept, x is zero. Why? Because that's what it means. Say, say it hits right here. Let me just kind of fake it so we can see it. And just say, well, pretend it hits right there. Bonk. What, is, what does that mean? What's the coordinates that? Over, zero, up, I'm not sure. But it's over zero, huh? If it's right on the y-axis, it's over zero, isn't it? See how its x-coordinate would have to be zero? Just like the green ones have a y-coordinate of zero? Because that's what it means. If you're on a grid line, one of your numbers is zero. That's what it means to be on a grid line. Are we okay with that? Does that make sense? I think only if that really makes sense will you be able to remember it three weeks from now on the final exam. Thank you.
good? When you're on a grid line, one of your numbers has to be zero. So when you find when we find intercept points, you got to make you got to plug in zero, and we always plug in the opposite letter zero. So to find an x-intercept, let me write both the game plans here. To make to find x-intercepts, we make y zero and solve. To make to find y-intercepts, we make x zero and solve. We good? So let's do it. This will be a piece of cake. This part will be easy. Where's the equation? Same, same equation. We just keep using the same equation. So I'm going to write out f of x. What is it? x squared plus 8x plus 7? Okay. x squared plus 8x plus 7. Now remember, what is f of x really? That's y, isn't it? So let me just write it that way. Okay, so what am I supposed to plug in? 0 for x. So this is 0. I'm going to go there and there, and I'll get y equals 0 squared plus 8 times 0 plus 7. y is 7. So that was pretty easy. So that, careful, we need both numbers, 0 comma 7. That's the y-intercept. We finally answered all the questions. This is 0, 7, we're done. Questions I can answer on that. Is that Okay. Let's try one of these, huh? I think I made it. Let's find the vertex, which means the center. Which means the center. How do we do it? What formula am I going to use? Let me just get you going, and then I'll let you work it out. So let me make sure you're on the right track. What's the formula for the vertex? Yeah, x. Remember, start with x. x equals negative b over 2 a. It's the beginning of the quadratic formula. Let me jump in at this point and help. So you're getting that okay? So a is negative 1, right? And B is negative 2. We okay with that? So now there's also a negative built right into the formula. Right? So you've got to be careful with all these negatives. There's a negative on the B. That's going to be in addition to whatever B is. You, you get it? So there's a negative in the formula. And then if B is negative, which it is, you've got double negatives on the top, which would be positive on the top. Right? So, um, so I'm going to plug in. A is negative, oh, it's supposed to be B, huh? B is negative 2 over A, negative 1. So we got three negatives. What's that going to be, positive or negative? Three negatives? It's going to be negative in the end. Two, uh, so it's going to be 2 over 2. I mean, if you want, it's, it's positive 2. I could do it more slowly. I'm probably going. Positive 2 over negative 2, it's negative 1. Is that good? So X is negative 1. Y'all getting that Okay. Now, what do you do with that? Plug that in. Plug it into the original. Because remember that f of x in the beginning? That's really y, isn't it? So we've really got, this is really y equals, whoops, um, negative x squared minus 2x plus 8. So grab that negative 1 now. Plug it in. Plug it in. Get the y value. And then that'll be the center of the u shape. Go to the graph. Put that center down and then find the one other dot using the slope. Right? What is the slope? Right in the front. Right? Slope's right in the front of the original equation. What's the slope? Negative one, negative one over one. So it's down one over one, isn't it? Rise, negative one, down one. This is going to be a U-shape going down, isn't it? Remember when the number in the front is negative, the U goes down. When the number in the very front is positive, the U goes up. So it's going to be a U-shape going down. So get that, and then after you've got the graph... Let's find the x. Uh, so when you plug in, so let me let me show you how because you just you just don't want to mess up on this little stuff, and that's what gets people. It really is the little stuff. So here's what I would do to be super careful. I would just put a blank. If my test grade was on the line, I would do something super careful. I always did. My kids think I'm crazy. Every now they'll come back from taking. I remember a couple years ago, my daughter came back from taking an English placement test, and she's and I'm like, "How'd you do, honey?" And she's like, "I think I did pretty good." She said, but I realized afterwards that I turned the pages and two of them were stuck together. So I ended up like skipping six problems or whatever. And I was like, why would you do that? I mean, I try to be nice, but, I, and, I, and this is just the truth. I'm sure I'm just, you know, many people would say I'm just weird and overly cautious, but I would literally lick my, when I was taking the test, where my grade was on the line and getting into a certain program, I would lick my finger and I would, look, I would look at the page number, and I would look at the opposite one. 
I would make sure that didn't happen. And I said to my daughter, so you don't look at the pages? Oh, Dad, who looked at the page numbers? I did. I looked at the page numbers, and I never made that mistake. Anyway, so I'm sure I'm weird. But really, I mean, really, do things like this. It helps, right? Because we all make mistakes. We're all human. You see me make mistakes all the time. But when my test grade's on the line, I do things like this to make sure I don't make it. I still make mistakes, but it, it helps limit them. So, um, yeah, so see, I'm putting blanks where the X's are, right? Blank, blank, where those are, just so it's really clear. Then I plug in. I make things big, too. So I make the minus signs big. I have pretty sloppy writing. But as long as I make it big, I don't lose too many things. So, um, so I'm going to plug in the negative one, negative one, negative one, right? So don't make things really small. It's easy to lose stuff. Then that minus sign right here just sits there. He's not being squared, huh? But the other one becomes positive one. Two negatives here make positive. Eight and two is ten. Minus one, nine. Y is nine, huh? So yeah, so be careful on that. So Y is nine. Okay, so we have our X. We have our Y. X and Y. So that's the center. Negative one, nine is going to be the center of our U shape. Let's go to the graph. We'll go back one, up nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So back one, up nine. There it is. Back one, up nine. The center of the U shape, the center of the parabola. Now, we need one more. Do we need to know is it going up or is it going down? And what tells us that is what's in the very front here, negative one, right? The number in the very front, just like for the homework last night, what's in the very front is the rise. Put that over one, that's my rise over run. So it's going down one, isn't it? This U-shape's going down. So start right here, go down one over one. So there's, there's a down one over one. There's my second dot connect the dots. There's the general look at the, of, the, of the graph. Now we got to find the x-intercepts. Everybody good to there? How do we find x-intercepts? We set y to zero. Remember, intercepts is always opposite letter zero. To find x-intercepts, make y zero. To find y-intercepts, make x zero. It always is opposite letter zero. That's how we find intercepts. So to find x intercepts, make y zero. So, okay, where? Go back to the or same original equation, this one right here. Make y zero. So it's, it is f of x is minus x squared. What is it? Minus 2x plus 8. Minus 2x plus 8, yeah. And then the fx, that's your y. So put in zero there. Zero equals... Minus x squared minus 2x plus 8. We good to there? Because mm -hmm. I need to show you a trick. This one has an extra wrinkle that the other ones did it. Everybody good to there so far? So for intercepts, you always set opposite letter to 0. Good thing to put in a 3 by 5 card. So x intercepts make y 0, y intercepts make x 0. Okay, so now we're to here. What are we supposed to do? Well, diamond, right? Mm -hmm. But you know you never want to do diamond when you have a negative in the front. Because it just doesn't work right. I mean, I could show you a tricky way, but it's rather, better just get rid of that thing. How do I get rid of that thing? Multiply both sides by negative one. It's gone. So is everybody seeing what I'm saying? So they say in the south, are you smelling what I'm stepping in? Are you with me? Are you tracking with me? So um, you multiply through by negative one all the way through. And what's negative 1 times 0? What's anything times 0? Zero? 0. And now this will be positive x squared plus 2x minus 8. You tracking with me? Right? So never... Well, I'll write a note on the side. Never leave negative in the front of x squared. Multiply by negative 1. Okay, now do the diamond thing. Can you do it from there? So do the diamond thing, find the x-intercepts, and after that, find the y-intercepts. Okay, so... I'm going to do the diamond thing here. 
So what multiplies to be negative 8 adds to be 2. So what times what's 8? 4 times 2, 2 times 4. How do you know the signs? Remember how we always do the signs on the diamond? Where does, what tells us the sign? The, the bottom bigger, right? Whatever sign is on the bottom goes to the bigger. Plus on the bottom goes to the 4, the bigger. So plus on the bottom goes to the bigger, plus 4, minus 2. Multiplies to be negative 8, adds to be plus 2. So there we go. So that factors as... Let's factor it now. So, um, so it factors as 0 equals x minus 2, x plus 4. And you know, it's just going to be opposite sign on both those. Okay, if I just jump to that. You know how that does that every time when you go from the parentheses to the final answer? It always ends up being opposite sign. So it's going to be plus 2 and negative 4. This is at positive 2. This is at back 4. Everybody good? How do we write those answers? 2, 0, comma, minus 4, 0. Either order, doesn't matter. There's the x-intercepts. We're almost done. And what's last thing? What is the y-intercept? Remember what you do? You set x to 0, right? To find intercepts, you're always setting the opposite letter to 0. So to find x intercept, a y intercept, you make x 0. So that's super easy, right? Whenever you plug in 0 for x, all the x's drop off. What's y going to be? 8. Eight. It's always just that last number, the c, the abc, that last number. That's always going to be the y-intercept, because when you plug in x0, the x squared and the regular x, those all drop out, don't they? Every time. Getting the hang of that? So that last number in the formula, that's always your y-intercept. And sure enough, this is up at 8, isn't it? So that, that is over 0, up 8, we're done. Because when you plug in x0, you know, those other x terms drop out, don't they? Good, are we okay on that? This making sense? Questions I can answer? Maybe do one more of these and I think we're good for for these type. Yeah. I think. I'll glance over. Okay. Let's do the same thing. So start off, what are we gonna find first off? The vertex, the center. And what's our formula for finding the center? Yeah, careful, it's x equals negative b over 2a. That's right. So plug that in. Get, okay, so how we how we doing on getting that? Are you, can I help with the fractions there? So it'd be negative b, b is just 1, huh, over 2a. a is a fourth. We good to there? Now, can you do that? Um, I'd encourage you to bring the calculator with you that you're going to use on the test, and I'll help you, you know, be comfortable with that thing. You don't want to... Just have your cell phone every day, and then suddenly on test day, you know, you have a regular calculator. Make sure you know how to bring your regular calculator with you. Anyway, um, do you know how to crank that out on your regular calculator, whatever you're going to use in the test? You okay with that? You could, um, you could just make that a decimal if you wanted. You know, one-fourth is like 25 cents, right? A fourth of a dollar is 25 cents, 0.25. You could just do it that way if that's easier for you. Just make it 0.25 there. See what I did? Just made that 0.25, and then hit the buttons on your calculator. What's 2, and then you go 2 times 0.25, that'll be 0.5. And then divide in your calculator, you'll get minus 2. We getting that okay? However you do it, there's a million different ways. You should get x is negative 2. x is negative 2. So that's the x value. All right, so, um, all right, let's take it, take it from here. So where are we at? So we have our x value, so I'm going to plug into my y equation now. So bring this down. y equals 1. We're doing the worst one right now. This is the hard as it gets in this section. So I'm putting the blanks where the x's are. I'm going to plug in. 
going to plug in negative 2. So negative 2, negative 2. Like that. That good? Plug in negative 2, plug in negative 2. And so now, I, um, you can just type all that on your calculator. If you're good with your calculator, just type it all in. You know, that's totally good if you have trouble. So I'd really, it's all this little stuff. One good thing is, do you guys have a tutoring? You guys have a tutoring center here, right? Where you can just like do a learning center? Is that what it's called? Where you can just do your work and there's tutors available? And so I would do that. You don't, you don't want the little stuff to get you. So you just, you just do your homework. Do they have computers in there? The tutoring center? I'm not feeling like you guys spend your life in there. I'm not I'm hearing a lot of feedback. Like, I don't know. I don't know where that place is. <laughs> you ever been there? I, this isn't my campus, so I don't... I'm not here in the daytime, so I don't know. I've heard there is one, though. Yeah. So, I, so I'd encourage you. I mean, you got... you Really, with math, you've got to get this little stuff down. There's just no getting around it. So, like, if you're doing these things, you're getting wrong answers. That means there's something you're doing wrong, and you've got to get that remedy. You know, you can't just go, well, yeah, I hope it'll all work out. It, it won't. It won't. You, you, I had to, too. You know, I had to go in with my list to my teachers and go, what's going on? And number three, I'm getting the wrong answer. And they'd go, look, Aaron, see the negative? And I'd go, oh. And I would learn a lesson. And my understanding would go forward. you got to do that. There's just, math is relentless, merciless. You've got to be that way with it. So you guys, so I encourage you, work in, work in that tutoring center, you know, and you get stuck or... Any questions you have that you get stuck on, but ask the tutors, ask a friend, get it, get it figured out. So um, negative 2 squared is 4, like that. And then so just use your calculator. One, you know, literally, here's what I mean by use your calculator. Let me, let me not just say a phrase and not be helpful. What do I mean? Uh, well, I mean go 1 divided by 4, literally hit those buttons. 1 over 4, di fraction means divide, right? So literally hit the buttons, 1 divided by 4 times 4 plus negative 2. Now there's a negative button on your calculators, which is, for most calculators, different than the subtraction. But you could just go subtract 2. It's the same thing. Plus, and how do you do the fraction in 3 fourths? 3 divided by 4 and hit equals. Literally hit those buttons and you'll get negative 0.25. You getting that? Uh, making sense what I'm saying? So literally just do that. So negative 0.25. So what's our, what's our center? Negative 2, negative 0.25. That's the center of the uh, U shape, the, ver the parabola. It's the vertex of the parabola, right? So let's go to the graph then. So we have a graph here. Where's that center? Back 2, down 0.25. So back 2, down just a little bit, huh? It's kind of like right there. It's multiple choice on the test. That's all we care about. You know, the one that looks like it's just a little below two. And then uh, where's it going from there? Oh, you know what? Actually, when there's a fraction in the front, yeah, let me, that's why I wanted to show you this one. When you have a fraction in the front, don't do the right. My, my little rise over run trick doesn't work. It's, it's a little trick that doesn't work. When the fraction in the front, do not do rise over run. Um, we're not really supposed to be using rise over run. That's a line trick. That's for a line, really, not a U shape. I'm sort of, I'm sort of doing it kind of cheaty to make these easier, but it won't work for a fraction in the front. Don't use it. It won't work for a fraction in the front. Well, what do you do then? Well, actually, I could, I could, actually, I could make, I could make it work again. I don't, I don't want you to have things that are hard for you to remember, though. Just, you're going to find the x-intercepts in a second anyway. Just use those. Just use those. As your other dot, you know, we just need one other dot, right? So just use the x-intercepts, which we will find in a moment. You guys with me? So when you have a fraction in the front, don't do the rise over run thing. It doesn't, it only, the trick only works. It only sort of works. It works, but anyway, good enough. Um, well, let me just make it work. This is bugging me. Um, I feel kind of dumb saying, don't, don't do it. All right, so here, let me do it. So it's minus 2, minus 2.5. Here's what you have to do, though. When the fraction in the front, you have to always, always 
over 1. You always have to put it over 1. You know what I mean? You think, well, no, that, because you, you're going to be tempted to go, that's, that's the rise and that's the run, right? Well, you, you have to just put it over 1. The trick has to be over 1. The rise is only a fourth, in other words. That's probably confusing, huh? Ah, forget it. Just forget it. Go back to the don't do it. Don't, don't. Fraction in the front. Do not, sorry, I thought it would be easy, then I realized it got hard. Do not do rise over run. What do you do then? Instead, find the intercepts. So here we go. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's find the intercepts. How do we find the x-intercepts? What do we always do to find x-intercepts? Y equals zero. So take the equation. Where is it? There it is. So um, y equals, so I'm showing you the worst one with the fractions. One-fourth x squared plus x plus three-quarters. Okay, and so you put in zero there for y, zero equals one-fourth x squared plus x plus three-fourths. So now, if that's a pain. What do we do with fractions when we have an equal sign? Get them out of there. Multiply through by four. You know what I mean? We've done this before. Multiply through by four. Cancel. Cancel. What's zero times four? Zero is x squared plus four x plus three. See how much better that is? See what happened there? I multiplied through by 4 to get rid of those fractions. So whenever you have fractions and you have an equal sign, just multiply both sides by 4, or whatever the denominator is. Now you can do the diamond on that piece of cave, right? Everybody taking note of that? So... Let's do the diamond thing. So the diamond, what multiplies to be 3, adds to be 4, multiplies to be 3. What times what is 3? 1 and 3. Both positive to add to be 4, huh? So it's going to be x plus 1, x plus 3. So the answers are just going to be negative 1, negative 3. Is that okay if I just jump to it? Negative 1, negative 3, those are the x-intercepts. So what does that mean? Negative 1 right here and negative 3 right there. And so the U shape must go like this, huh? See how I never had to worry about the rise of a run? I had the center dot, negative 2 minus 2.25 right there. And then I just found the two x-intercepts. So use one of those as your other dot. And you know what the U shape looks like. I never needed the rise of a run thing. See what I mean? If you're finding x-intercepts, those will be your other points. You just need one other point. That's two x, though. We good? Are we not good? Anything I can answer on that? Last thing, y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? Remember? What is it? You should be able to look at it and just tell it to me. Three quarters. Done. Remember, because y-intercept, you plug in x, zero, those just drop out. It's always the last number, the c, a, b, c. So the y-intercept. y-intercept, we make x0. When you make x0, when you put in 0, put in 0, they drop out. y is 3 quarters, so that's over 0, up 3 quarters. That's the y-intercept, which is right there. We're done with this problem. That's the worst one. All those fractions and things. Everybody okay with how to do your calculator with those fractions, get those numbers? Make sure you can do that. Go to the tuning center if you have trouble. They will help you. Good. Questions? All's well. Okay. Um, I know a great tutor. I don't know if she works. If she's in my other class, my Math 61. They give a, She's like in class with me. She helps the students. She's great. Shelby, I don't know if she's in there very often, though. Anyway, so I recommend her highly. She's a fabulous tutor, Shelby. So, um, all right, so we did number five. So number seven is going to be y equals x squared plus 4x plus 8. Okay, so same thing. Let's find the center. You guys are pros at this now. So start by finding the center. 
which is x equals negative v over 2a, right? Okay, so um, negative b, what's b? 4 over 2a, a is 1. So that's negative 2. x is negative 2. So we got, we've got our x value. Um, so n now we got to get y. y equals 1x squared plus 4x plus 8. Plug in the negative 2, plug in the negative 2. You don't need that 1 in the front there. So, so I'm putting parentheses. I want to not mess up. Put in negative 2, put in negative 2. And so what do we get? That'll be 4 minus 8 plus 8. Y is 4. So the center is minus 2, comma 4. So that's the center. Minus 2, 4. Let's go to the graph. Back 2 up 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, right. Are we good? Back 2 up 4. There's the center. Okay, so now, uh, where is this U-shape going from there? How do we find our next point? <coughs> we use the slope, right? We're, we're going back to the only time you don't want to use the slope is if there's a fraction in the front. I don't know if you caught that. Did you understand why I didn't do that in the last problem? It's because the last problem had a fraction in the front, so I said don't use rise over run when you have a fraction in the front. That's just hard to do. So this one's just got a 1 in the front, just 1 over 1, rise over run. So from here we go up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Does that make sense? So from the center, up 1 over 1, connect the dots, it's a U-shape going up. There we go. Good. Now, the part I really wanted to show you with this problem, so that was all just normal, is finding x-intercepts, which is the next part of the question as usual. How do we find x-intercepts? What do we always do to find x-intercepts? Y zero, right? Intercepts always mean opposite letter zero. X-intercepts y zero, y-intercepts x zero. So make y zero, go back to the equation, grab it, here it is y equals x squared plus 4x plus 8 and plug in that 0. So plug in, oh, no, that's, that's for x. <laughs> plug in for, for, for y. So you get 0 is x squared plus 4x plus 8. That just won't factor. Did you see what I mean? If you say what two numbers multiply to be 8, add to be 4, no numbers do that. What numbers multiply to be 8 and add to be 4? There's nothing that can... You know, what times what is 8? 2 times 4? No way they're going to add to be 4. This one's just not factorable. So I'll just write not factorable. No x intercepts. There's none. Now, look at the graph for a minute. Shouldn't we have already known that? Where does that graph hit the x-axis? Look at it. It starts up there, above the x-axis, and goes up. It's not going to hit the x-axis. What are we doing looking for x-intercepts? <laughs> right? Of course there's no x-intercepts. So graphs can do that. If it starts above and goes up, or the ones that start below and go down, will never hit the x-axis, huh? So this one has no x-intercepts. How can we find the y? Can you just tell me the y-intercept? We'll be done. Yeah, it's the number at the end. So the y-intercept is 8. So really it's over 0, up 8. It must hit it like way up here, over 0, up 8. We're done. Good with that? Graphing those U-shapes? So h of t... Minus 16t squared plus 128t. 
That is the height. Now, it's height h in feet after t seconds. Height t seconds. So, so some projectile is fired up. So, so it would be like me throwing my um, d. Let's go back. What do they want from me? Maximum height. Maximum height. Think with me for a second. We have a graph, and it, it's going to do something like that. This is the max height right here, isn't it? What is that point? The, the vertex. The center of the U-shape will be the maximum height. See the practical application of this? See how it's starting to be useful? It's, it's totally useful, this stuff. You're just, you're just on the verge of where math starts to get, you know, really, I think, interesting. I like real life. I like physics, even though I've lost many hours of sleep this semester doing physics with my daughter at the kitchen table. I'm getting too old for this. But, um, but I love it. I love to see the math, you know, the real life things. We're doing planets that are orbiting satellites, orbiting planets, and what the speed is. and the, You know, it's real life stuff, and it's all using these kinds of equations. All these kinds of equations. My daughter had to take all these levels, and now she can do physics because she has the math to do that. So that's so that's what will do that. So all right. So so basically, they're saying, hey, find the center of the problem, aren't they? Find the center of the problem, and you'll find the maximum height, won't you? So we just got to take that equation. You know how to find the center of a problem now? How do we find the center? So negative b over two a. Yeah, x equals. Negative b over 2a. Here we go. So x equals negative. What's, what's the b? Let me let you do that. Just let me see. Negative b. b is that 128 number, and a is the negative 16, huh? So negative b over 2 times a, and a is negative. Just use your calculator. So I, first off, I would figure out the sign ahead of time. So, well, it's negative 128 over negative 32, right? Two negatives is positive. Divide that. Is it four? Four. four. So positive four. That's actually T. It's time is what it is, but whatever. X, T, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's technically T. See, they use T and not X, but whatever. That, that means it's four seconds. If you want to know the real life, that means it's going to hit its maximum height in four seconds. It's actually T. But it's fine. You, I'm using X. You're using X, whatever. Um, so it's, it's technically T, though, so I'll be a little... It's, so it's plus four. That means four seconds. Now, that's not the height yet. That's when it reaches its height. But they asked me for what its maximum height is. So what do I do with that number now? Pop it in, because I want to know H. I want to know height. Huh. At four seconds. Because now I know four seconds, it'll max out. So plug in the four. So plug in the four. So Y equals, or H in this case... Negative 16 times 4 squared plus 128 to 4. Just use your calculator. That'll be minus 16 times 16 plus whatever 128 times 4 is. Is the answer come out 128? No, I could be wrong. I'm sort of guessing. So no? We're getting different answers. I think it's 256. Isn't it 256? Yeah. yeah, so check that. I should get 256. 256 what? I, when I took physics the first time, they never want numbers. My, my physics teacher, he used to, if you ever gave an answer in physics class like 256, he'd go, 256? 256 what, Heron? 256 dogs? What is that 256? 256 dogs in the kennel? That's what he'd always say. So that's 256 what? They want the units. 256. It's not dogs. Yeah, because 4 squared. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just did the squaring actually. 256. Feet. It's height. It's height, right? It's height. So in other words, that projectile will reach a maximum height of 256 feet at time, four seconds into its flight. That's what we just figured out. At four seconds, it'll max out. You know how long it'll be in the air? It's, it's starting from here. 
Four to reach max, four to come back down. Yeah. Eight seconds in the hang time. That's when they punt the football and they do the hang time, you know, kind of thing. The hang time for that projectile will be eight seconds. It'll come back down in total eight seconds. Four to the max, four more to hit the ground. That's assuming no wind resistance. So if you know, things get too complex, we can put in wind. It's assuming no wind resistance. Anyway, interesting stuff. I'm a wannabe physics teacher, but I, I better know. But let me just point out what you would do really quick. They give me this equation, cost. That's a cost equation. So this would be a business. The other one was a physics application. This would be a business application. So we're getting real here. I always like it when we get real with the math. So this is a cost, and the business is saying, look, that's what it costs us to produce the bicycles. We want to minimize our cost. Of course, businesses want minimum cost. So that's an x squared equation, isn't it? So that means it's a parabola. If you graph it, it's a U-shape. And is it a U-shape going up or down? That's a U-shape going up because there's positive in the front, huh? It's always about that A, the very front term. So what? Well, that means his minimum is right there at his vertex. They're just asking you for the vertex again, aren't they? Do you see, whenever they say minimum or maximum, that means vertex, the center of the U-shape. That's what that means. That's the great usefulness of finding the center of a parabola. So if that was a profit function or it's a cost function, you want to do it that way. So I'm going to move on.